On today's episode of Watch Jerrigo, we start de-ricing my 2007 BMW M6 that I bought for only $3,750. What is going on guys? I am Watch Jay Ergo, and like I said today, we are here with the M6, a car I'm very, very excited about, powered by the V10. Of course, in the last video you saw, the rod bearings are gone. Parts are here for that, so that will begin very soon, the bottom end rebuild. But first, I took a quick poll on Instagram. If you're not following me there, make sure you do. Head on over to Instagram.com slash Watch or just search for Watch Jay Ergo. I had a poll and I said, way bigger carbon wing or completely stock? And as you can see, completely stock one, we have this that just showed up. You guys can watch it show up. <laughs> Look at this. One M6 trunk. Absolutely by chance, I came up here to see the car ninja and uh, I walked through the shop and I was like, where is he? And they're like, he's out back. Getting the new trunk for the M6 that has no holes in it. There's no pre-drilled wing holes, even though I really wanted to go a lot bigger. So this thing is from PartsLink up in Nebraska. It was pretty funny. I gave them, uh, they called me to figure out chipping details and they were like, we saw your name. Are you watched Jerigo? Then I guess they looked up a few other things, found the video about the M6 and was like, there's the car. So I do love all of you guys that watch this and I love that like all the salvage arts know who I am when I call, it's really funny. It's the right crew. It's us people that work on our own cars. So uh, let's get this thing unboxed, take a look at the new trunk lid. It should be very, very nice. It looked great in the pictures and it should be black sapphire metallic, black shorts metallic, which is the, the color on the car. I hope. If it's not, I'm in trouble. Mike from Velocity Garage over here brought me a sledgehammer and was like, go to work. So I guess we just... I appreciate that it came wrapped up in carpet so we can carpet the uh, car ninja's office or any of his workspaces, whatever he needs, some luxurious flooring in, we'll get this taken care of for him. So let's uh, get the straps off here. This carpet weirdly looks brand new. These guys just keep carpet in stock so they can ship out trunks. Well, I thought that was gonna take a lot longer than it did, but it went very, very quickly. Now we can cut all this. Now we've got my brand new M6 trunk all unwrapped and on the ground. It looks really good. And here we have the giant urethane or uh, Duraflex or something like that wing that's on the car. Pretty funny, right? I really, really, really wanted a huge carbon wing. I think this wing looks great on the car. Obviously not this specific wing because it's cheap junk, but I think a much bigger wing would have looked awesome. Unfortunately, we're going stock. And honestly, the other reason that I was down to go stock is because resale probably goes up. And uh, you know, I, I plan on driving this for a while, but to start with, we're gonna go ahead and clean it up and start from like a blank slate. In the last video, I took off all the supports that were running through this wing and all that stuff. And those were probably there to stop the vibration on the highway because I assume this thing is just going down the road like that. But uh, in this video, it'll just come out looking amazing. Other things we're gonna do today, try to get some more of the wrap off. It's behind the license plate frame there. Of course, that's some of the blue wrap from when this was two-tone. I'll throw a picture up right now of the old look. And uh, maybe we'll take the house siding off. The house siding looks really good, but if we're gonna do that, maybe we'll do a proper uh, side skirt for the car. And we're gonna go ahead and take off the canards. We'll throw those in the trash. And uh, this fits really, really well, actually. We're gonna go ahead and take it off too, because it is completely fake. And I'm not a big fan of completely fake carbon fiber. That's why I wanted to spend a lot of money and do a huge GT wing on the back that was made out of real carbon. Uh, the one thing we don't have is new grills. Those are very plastic and very, very fake carbon. Look, the carbon changes sizes as it rolls through there. I don't have anything to replace that. Maybe it'll clean up a little bit. And uh, really the paint's not that bad. The paint needs a lot of help though. There's all kinds of adhesive left from the wrap on here. So as you can see, all of those spots that people think were paint failure, that's actually wrap adhesive. It needs hit with a bunch of rapid remover. Whole car needs wiped down. Let's get in here, get the trunk open and start taking this apart. Uh, I don't really know what all has to be done. I just know that uh, I think all the trim has to come out of the trunk so we can get the arms off. At least this, at least this works, or 
don't know how that works. I was hitting the trunk button and nothing was happening. It's also panic. Yeah, if you hold it for more than three seconds, it's panic. How come it won't open the trunk? Let's try it again. Two seconds. One, two. Good job. Ah, the car ninja knows. There you go. We got the uh, inner cover off of this guy. Throw this over here. They're antennas for things. So, let's see, how do we get these unhooked? Uh, I'm gonna assume there's like a push tab or something. There we go. Cool, that's not too bad. I was not expecting to find giant bricks of antennas inside the trunk lid. There's another one, and another one. Like DJ Khaled always said. And look at that. That is hideous. So we're gonna get all that out of here. Uh, I'm gonna get all the wiring harnesses unhooked. And then uh, after that's all done, we can pull out these Torx bolts here. It's gonna take a minute to get all this off. So I'm gonna start working these out of here and getting all the little T moldings that are holding all the taped up wiring together. I was just about to take the old antennas out of that other trunk lid and I went ahead and stripped the uh, liner off and lo and behold the antennas are still in this one. So all you have to do here is pop all the same stuff off. There's a clip there, clip there, clip there, clip there. And I pulled off these ones, pull off the antennas and we'll be good to go. For the cherry on top of this, I have to take the key cylinder out. The key cylinder, of course, is inside the BMW logo, which means I probably have to change the whole latching mechanism. If you uh, take a look right inside here, there's a key. On the new ones, that's the backup camera, and that's like a thousand times better than this. Better than this ugly aftermarket backup camera I've got. Got this one off, you just pull. That one took a while to get out of there. Now there's one more. Johnny wants to do it the easy way. I told you I wanted to do it the hard way, man. Hey. You, weren't, you weren't having it. Yeah. All right. Oh, all the cables are hooked up to that? Yeah, that's fine. Ah, uh, we got it. Okay. There's the lock module, there's the one. Yeah. Of course, you just pull hard. Well, now I can take all of these screws out of the lock mechanism and get that out of there. After lots of hanging out in my hideout here and finagling, it looks like all I should have to do here is flip this around, pull, Okay, there goes most of it, and the lock assembly comes out. Now we can start swapping everything back over to the new trunk. That took uh, a little longer than I expected. All right, now I rinse and repeat with the uh, latch on this one. And another one. Nice. All right, all the antennas, super easy to plug in. Just make sure the clip is on the wrong side and they're all keyed. So that's easy, easy. These wires snap in right there. There's a clip, put all those in. And this one goes around here and in. Trunk is all back together other than the inside trim. So we're gonna go ahead and lift this thing up, start ripping that front arrow off. Arrow is a, uh, a generous word for that. I took a quick look underneath and there's nothing on here except Phillips screws. So I assume these are self-tapping and of course they are. They must've put a nut on that one. 10 foot long screw in these ones. Well, that should have been enough to knock this thing down. I don't know what I'm missing here. A little wiggle. And boom. Ah, double-sided tape. That's what I was missing. They attached it with the uh, adhesive of kings. Now for some more wood screws that are in the bumper. Look at that, it's cracked everywhere there's a screw. And that should get rid of our canards. Oh, double-sided tape. I have a lot of stuff to throw away here. 
I might keep this for somebody else that wants some ground effects. That's one of those uh, universal kits you can put on any car, which is pretty funny. Uh, which means I can get rid of that. Hey. All right. And these canards are on there with all that double-sided tape. Well, now I gotta shave all these holes down in my bumper, but hey, we have de-arrowed the front. Now onto the house siding, which is actually kind of holding up the whole car. That stuff was in the way of the lift points. I kind of love the arrow, but it had to go. Now, whoever put the house siding on this car did not want it to go anywhere. Take a look at all the fasteners. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. There's probably 20 fasteners in each side on the house siding. Uh, I'm gonna go grab the bit for the impact and suck those things off there. Also, the house siding is spray painted. It was definitely white before. You can see on the bottom, white vinyl siding off a house. Look at these like one inch screws. Way too long of a screw. All right, there's all the fasteners I get out of this side. Rinse and repeat on the other side. And we have to get it off the lift to get them all the way off because the lifts are actually retaining the uh, vinyl siding. I really don't know anyone else who's ever been able to say I'm taking the vinyl siding off my BMW. So uh, maybe that's a world's first. And just like that, we have unpimped Ziato. But uh, I gotta give whoever did this credit. I know it's house siding, but they even cut out the lift points and everything so it would fit flush. I mean, obviously not the greatest thing, but they tried. I mean, credit where credit's due. Now I get to take all this and throw it in the dumpster. And now for the tag frame. And some of you guys are thinking, why'd you take the tag frame off? Very simple, to get that wrap off. Look at the, look how bad the wrap job is. There's big old wrinkles underneath there. All right, well, I need to get a heat gun or a torch. Once we get a little heat on this, it should make this easy. We can just keep right on chugging. It's gonna take a little while to pull all this off. Yeah, if you have one. off here with our tag frame back and now we've completely unpimped the auto look at all this factory arrow that looks good well Johnny and I were talking about when we were gonna do these rod bearings here and he was like let's throw it on the lift again where's all this fluid coming from well if you take a look right in there is pouring out of the steering box this corner right yep you can see it's super wet up there so that that just added a lot of cost to this job <laughs> <laughs> that's no joke well uh, we're gonna figure out what that's gonna cost the uh, word on the street is it's close to two thousand dollars so good thing it will be no day because the suffering it's is gonna already be down. apart <laughs> yeah no doubt no doubt looks like somebody wanted to change the alternator or something it's really clean and the whole car is clean it really is kind of clean especially now that it's been unpimps it looks great unpimped the auto all I did was take out a bunch of uh, wood screws <laughs> and that is it for today guys thank you so much for watching us unpimp the m6 it's so much closer to going down the road as soon as these rod bearings are done and i can't wait to show that to you guys next we're going to start on that this weekend so don't forget to head on over to shop watchjr.com where you can get cool shirts not like this and please like share subscribe do whatever you want to do and i will talk to you next time now what airplane should i put this on probably some kind of rc airplane oh yeah i can put the uh, trunk trim back in probably smart to do that. The fasteners on the trunk trim are super nice and they just drop right in. They also don't break when they come apart, which is pretty impressive for really any car. And she is all wrapped up for real this time. And if you want to uh, put the grab handle back, the emergency exit handle, you just kind of pop that down in there like this and push really hard. And then that should snap back in so it doesn't come out easily. About like that, hang it back up, boom. Trunk depimped. This has helper springs in here. That's what that noise is. Ooh, the power mirrors try to run. They try to fold up when the trunk closes and they just sit there and break. Pretty funny. Gotta do something about those power mirrors.